Hi, it's me again, the guy who decided to make a video game even though his IQ is about room temperature. This video is going to serve as an update to that adventure, and also as a means to shill my new game. More on that later. Some of you might remember this video I posted months ago. In it, I attempted to make a video game using only the blueprint system the Unreal Engine offers, and what I ended up with is something I'm still proud of to this day. Let's take a look under the hood and see how that bad boy works, shall we? I, uh... Look, I swear it wasn't like this last time I checked. Yeah, the game gave a new meaning to the phrase spaghetti code, and it looked more like an all-you-can-eat Italian buffet rather than an actual functioning game. Normally, that's to be expected with your first project, but I also knew the game I wanted this demo to become would take me multiple years to do it properly, so I put the project on hold and instead focused on the game with a much smaller scope. Now, that's what I would like to tell you. Instead, my ambitions got the better of me and I made even more spaghetti. On the plus side, I'll never go hungry again. Enter Turbot, a combination of the words turbo, because... Faced. And robot, because I can't model human appendages, yet. I grow stronger every time I open Blender, and you should all fear me. Huh. Weird. Anywho, Turbot is pretty straightforward. You're on one side of the level, and the goal is on the other. Get to the goal. It's heavily inspired by games like Cluster Truck and Verlay Swing, both fine-ass games you should definitely check out. What makes my game unique in this genre is the movement options the player has access to. Similar to my previous attempt at a game, you have source-like movement, which means you can gain speed by bunny hopping and air strafing. On top of this, I've heavily borrowed from the Titanfall games as you can also crouch slide, double jump, wall run, and dash. Some levels even have power-ups to expand your movement further, like this grappling hook. Look it, it's so shiny. Turbot started development on May 9th, 2021, and the first build was shared to my friends three days later, so what you're seeing is the very first prototype for this game. It was incredibly bare bones, and all I had really done was import the movement from my other game while adding a few other base mechanics, all of which were extremely rough, and the build as a whole is not at all what someone would consider a good game. So I got back to work, fine-tuning the mechanics until I was happy with how they felt. After that, I decided to tackle the game's art style. Oh, would you look at that! A conveniently placed button that finishes the game's art style for me. <laughs> I wish. With a little blood, sweat, tears, and more blood, I finalized the art style for Turbot. From there, I continued making levels and adding features like jump pads, curved walls to run on, and destructible walls you can punch through. I created about 15 levels in this style and then decided a change of scenery would be nice. So I plotted out five different worlds, each containing 15 levels with their own unique visuals and music. Speaking of music, there isn't any. I am by no means a composer, but luckily enough I have a friend that is, so I reached out to him for help. After some... <clears throat> gentle persuasion, my friend agreed to help make music for the game. One song per world, each one fitting the world's visual aesthetic. And let me tell you now, he did not disappoint. Once the music situation was, uh, taken care of, I got to work on the second world. This one would have heavy use of a new mechanic, ice. While on ice, your friction is reduced, but most importantly, if you crouch slide on ice, you gain speed faster than I get bad ideas. During testing, I noticed a lot of my friends would slide off the ice and not know how to regain control. This was because of two things. One, the ice would give them such high speeds that they couldn't control themselves, and two, the air strafing mechanic seriously weakened itself if you held forward while trying to turn in the air. The first problem had an easy solution. I added an air brake power-up that lets the player instantly stop their momentum at any point, allowing for people to quickly readjust themselves and continue onward. The second problem was a bit more complicated. If you're at a speed higher than your normal sprinting speed, the ability to air strafe is enabled. In order to gain or maintain speed higher than your sprinting speed, you have to be using movement mechanics that don't actually involve holding forward, such as air strafing. After a lot of trial and error, I found the easiest way to fix this is to completely disable the forward input if your speed is higher than your sprinting speed. If this sounds stupid, that's because it is. My games are full of caveman fixes like this. 
With World 2 completed and the mechanics polished even further, I decided it was time to tackle the main menu, since the current level hub was a little... Ah. Uh, shit. Oh hey look, there's that button again! And here it is, a nice main menu that has all your necessary options, with credits to myself and my composer friend. On top of that, I also created a timer system that showcases your personal best time for each level. Now we're on to World 3. This world is the one I'm most proud of visually, and John did an awesome job with the soundtrack as well. The main gimmick to this world is the glider power-up, which does exactly what you'd expect it to do. World 3 wrapped up pretty quickly, and I was able to move on to World 4. This one had some problems at the start. The first idea I had was to include a power-up that reversed gravity. These little pylon things would change colors depending on if you were using that power-up or not, and I was pretty happy with it. But after some testing with friends, I found the ability to constantly reverse gravity was not only slow as balls, but promoted a slower pace in general. I had to take this power-up back to the drawing board, and what I came up with worked out really well. Now instead of changing gravity, you get a jetpack that has limited fuel. The jetpack lurches you up and forward, and if you hold the button, you gain a lot of speed in the direction you're looking. I also made sure you can't feather the jetpack boost, as the initial startup will use a good chunk of fuel before burning slowly. Think Valkyrie from Apex Legends. World 4 also has an additional power-up that, once collected, permanently adds itself to your ability list. The Rocket Punch also does exactly what the name implies, and fires a rocket every time you punch. This can be used to destroy things at a distance, such as walls, turrets, and even enemy missiles. After that was completed, the rest of World 4 came pretty easily. Now on to World 5. Actually, you know what? Let's leave this world to the imagination. I don't want to spoil everything my game has to offer just yet. Now the main worlds and levels are completed, and on top of that, I was even able to sneak in a speedrun feature that has you going from the first level to the last with one continuous timer. This meant that a good chunk of the game was finished, so it was time to get the game ready to sell. I got the game set up on Steam, which totally didn't take me three days to figure out, but it's done now, and I only kinda wanna die. From there, I worked on Steam integration, such as the overlay and leaderboards for each level. The leaderboards are admittedly a bit jank, but they get the job done and that's all I need right now. And with that, I think we're done. The game has been in development for three months now and I'm very pleased with the work I put in. Turbot can be wishlisted on Steam and is set to release on July 30th, 2021. If you want to support me in my future endeavors with game development, and you like movement games like these, please check out Turbot when it releases. It would mean the world to me if you did. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time I get a bad idea.